Have you ever found yourself somewhere really high up? Maybe on top of a building or on the edge of a cliff and you're in perfectly good spirits and out of nowhere, a voice inside your head says, what if I jump? For me, it's not a thought that's rooted in wanting to end my life, but rather it's almost this combination of fear that I don't have full control over what my body might do, as well as a curiosity about how I'm actually free to make any decision I want at any moment. It's a rather startling thought, to say the least, and while it might feel like something must be wrong for you to have this thought, it's actually pretty common. This sensation has been studied over the years and was recently coined the high place phenomenon by a study at Florida State University. But long before that, the French already had a term for this sensation, l'appel du vide, which translates to the call of the void. But if you haven't experienced this feeling from a high place, the call of the void can also be the urge to stick something metal in an electrical outlet or to jerk the steering wheel into oncoming traffic, which apparently that sensation in particular is common enough that it became a viral TikTok trend on its own. What if I just... No, no, <laughs> no. Well, no, <laughs> no, no, no. No one really knows why we do this, but studies have shown that it doesn't actually indicate a desire to stop living. And instead it might actually affirm one's desire to live. And just a quick note on that, nothing I talk about in the rest of this video actually has to do with suicidal ideation. Um, in my opinion, that's actually a very different topic than the call of the void, and I'm just, I'm not gonna dive into that in this video, but please, if, if you are struggling with any thoughts like that, please reach out to anyone that's close to you. So, with the call of the void, there's definitely plenty of theories and ideas about why it occurs, and I think I've developed my own perspective on it, but first I wanna share what I think might be a helpful analogy. Business. Growing up, I was raised in a branch of the Christian church where Halloween was essentially forbidden. It's like there was this fear that by celebrating Halloween and participating in the dark themes that come along with it, you were essentially inviting that darkness or that evil into your own life. Almost as if, if you dress up like an axe murderer, you might one day become an axe murderer, or if you dress up as an evil spirit, you're asking to become possessed by a demon. <laughs> this slow look up, how did you plan that? <laughs> it's ridiculous. Oh. <laughs> Obviously I'm massively oversimplifying it. There is a lot more nuance to it than that, but I just don't see it that way at all anymore. Ignoring the darkness that human beings are capable of isn't what makes it go away. You have to face it head on. So many of the horror stories and ghost stories that we love to tell around Halloween are often based on or centered around real human atrocities that have occurred. The section of the graveyard is closed off and the legend is it's closed off because at one point there were so many like incidents happening in there, like ghost incidents and stuff. People that lived here were like, they talked to the council and they were you have to close this place off. 
they basically took all these people called the Covenanters. They put them in there in like the middle of winter, starved to death, froze to death. And the guy that put them in there, his crypt is right there. And his name is George McKenzie. And that's the legend of the George McKenzie poltergeist. And they have a website. There's an entire website dedicated to documented cases of people getting scratched, bit, uh -huh. bruised. Spoopy. Oh my God. It's actually locked so that you can't go because it's too haunted. Yes. Wow. Oh my God. I think a big part of our natural fascination with these ghost stories is rooted in a desire to understand ourselves and our humanity. Similarly with horror movies, I think a big part of the draw to watching a horror movie is the ability to understand yourself better and to see how you'll react to certain situations in the horror movie. So by this point, you're probably thinking, what in the world does this rant about Halloween and horror movies have to do with The Call of the Void? I think that The Call of the Void is this beautiful example of how persistent the human spirit is. When you're standing on that cliff and your subconscious offers up the thought to jump, it's almost like this check and balance system where your brain is reminding you that your life could end at any moment. And rather than just blissfully ignoring the fact that you are finite, you're faced head on with the dark reality that you could choose to cease to exist. But instead, once again, decide to keep going regardless.